What up, this is Ramash Green covering movies, TV and entertainment. Here's my review of Peacock's new limited series, Angeline. Hey, before you watch my review, please subscribe to my channel, press that like button, ring that bell so you can get notified whenever I post new videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please do so at patreon.com slash Ramash Green. That's patreon.com slash Ramash Green. Let's rock this. Now, confession time. Prior to this show, I knew nothing about the real billboard queen, Angeline. I grew up in the 90s, not the 80s, and on top of that, in Asia, not in SoCal. So I guess she's more of a local legend here. And unless you actually grew up in this next of the woods during that specific decade, then odds are you probably haven't heard of her either, until she ran for governor of course. But what I'm getting at is this show is my first encounter with the story of Angeline. But after having watched all 5 episodes, let me tell ya, this is a miniseries with an active imagination. Angeline is quirky and bizarre, it's sultry and silly, and it unapologetically embraces its own weirdness. One minute, any of the characters could be breaking the fourth wall, and the next minute, those same characters could be narrating while simultaneously playing their roles as written. This is a storytelling style that's very fluid and unpredictable, and it banks on how two people can remember the same situation differently. Mixing facts and fiction in a biopic is nothing new, but since there's always a degree of mystery to Angeline, it's pretty much anything goes here, and it becomes as wildly unbelievable as her flashy pink persona. Showrun and executive produced by Alison Miller, Peacock's limited series Angeline is about fame, identity, survival, billboards, corvettes, lingerie, men, women, women teasing men, men obsessed with women, West Hollywood, crystals, UFOs, and most importantly of all, the self-proclaimed Rorschach test in pink, glow-in-the-dark queen of the universe, Angeline. I'm not gonna lie, it was a bit of a struggle sitting through these episodes, because the whole time I kept wondering why should I care about this character? And the more the episodes illustrate her intentions and her manipulations, I start to question, is she a fraud? Or is she just that good at using her sex appeal to bend everybody to her will? By the way, this story is clearly set in a time of, as the old saying goes, blondes have more fun. Especially on the episode where Martin Freeman comes in playing the billboard guy who falls right under Angeline's spell. There are times when the show tries to make her out to be a strong independent girl power figure that's not to be underestimated, but really all I get from that is that she is a sad sad person. A dime a dozen, just like thousands of people who come to Hollywood wishing they could run away from whoever they were and somehow become a star. And think of those billboards all over town as the equivalence of going viral. Everybody would do anything for their 15 minutes. Now, the 80s Los Angeles look and vibe on this show are nicely done. The lighting is a bit dim on some parts, but even so, Angeline's bleach blonde hair and her pink outfit and car constantly dominate. Amy Rossum gives a hypnotic performance. She wraps us around her finger with her deluded speeches and her seductive smile. I don't know if Amy would have been my first choice for this particular role, but she made it work. Emmy leans in to her character's self-aggrandizement, and I love how the editing seamlessly shifts from one perspective to another, giving you two sides of the same coin if you will. You see, in Angeline's mind, she is the it girl, she's the bomb diggity, the cream of the crop. So when everybody around her brags about how good they've gotten, she always, always takes them down a peg. Yeah, that didn't happen. No, the band sucked. Oh, his daughter's jealous of me. It's a classic textbook case of narcissism, and yet, it's not quite so repulsive. I'm a little surprised that it took them till the final episode to dive into the real her, the truth about Angeline. But you know, saving that for last does mess with your head a little, as you ultimately try to decide whether she's good or bad or just simply misunderstood. All in all, Angeline miniseries is nothing short of fascinating. Still, I'm not sure if a lot of audiences are gonna bite, especially today's generation going Angeline who? And there really is no big inspiring moral lesson here other than hey, in America, with the right glam makeover, you can be whatever you tell yourself you wanna be.